ride a horse to the ring, you're supposed to fucking win the match. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Robert's Sports Show. I'm your host, Robert. AEW All Out Review. Um, took it out last night with the Pulse family in the Pulse Dungeon. Um, had some busy day, just now getting the review up. I've had a chance to kind of look at some stuff online today and Twitter and whatnot. I kind of see some uh, takes from the show, um, seeing some takes from other people and other companies. So we're going to run into this card, um, kind of go over a few things that happened, kind of see, uh, give you star ratings of the matches and everything. Um, pre-show match, we had Private Party. Uh, so the first pre-show match was a tag match. We had a team of Private Party, which is Mark Quinn and Isaiah Cassidy versus Ann Helico and Jack Evans. Um, like I said in the preview, I knew this match was going to be pretty good. Um, both these teams are just kind of the next evolution of tag teams. Jack Evans and Ann Helico have been tagging together for years in AAA Mexico. Um, Private Party has been on the Eddie circuit. They had some great battles with uh, Young Bucks at PWG and in House of Glory. Um, recently at House of Glory, about a month or so ago, there was a match. They Young Bucks' last indie match was against Private Party. Um, so I knew this match was going to be great. Uh, Private Party ended up getting the victory. Um, I give it three and three quarter star. I thought it was a great, great match to start to show off. Both these tag teams are going to go far. Um, I can see Private Party kind of being a champion at some point in time here. Um, as we see how stacked, stacked this tag division is. Um, and we uh, learn more later. We all know the uh, LAX debut. Um, but yeah, after this match, Private Party got the victory. Evans and Helico attacked Private Party. So they kind of had this little heel turn going on there. So I kind of like that. Um, I can see them kind of doing well on the heel on the kind of the heel side of the tag division. Um, so I'm pretty good with that. Uh, next up, we had the Casino Battle Royal. Um, the winner of the Casino Battle Royal went on, goes on to AEW in October 2nd to battle the, the winner of Rio and Hiro Shada match in order to determine the first ever AEW Women's Champion. Um, we had, I'd say most is kind of indie names in there. We had all the women on the current roster for AEW. Ali, Brandy Rhodes, um, Brett Baker, Pri Pri Priestley was there. Um, Nala Rose. Some kind of Shotzi um, McKenzie. She came in. She's kind of been an indie, one of the higher end indie women wrestlers. Um, there really no, was no true just... Oh my God! Surprise! Um, Nicole uh, Savoy, who was part of May Young Classic, the number twenty-one, the Joker one, was Mercedes Martinez. Um, I like that. She's been doing a lot with Shimmer, a lot with Shine. She's probably the best known independent women's wrestler, and for years one of the best. I would say Tessa Blanchard is probably the best now, but. Mercedes Martinez, if they got her sign, her and Eva Lise, who was shooting um, Lucha Underground, they were both in it. Um, yeah, the women's division kind of took on a little... If you get those names signed and they come in full-time, you may have something. Right now, the women's division AW is weak. Um, Nala Rose getting the victory. Some people liked it, some people hated it. You know what, it is what it is. In-ring ability. There's a lot that are better. Um, I don't like that. It's more because she's just a hoss. Um, ODB was in it. At one point, Awesome Kong, Nala Rose, ODB were all squared off together. Yeah, bunch of hosses trying to go at it there. Um, final two were Britt Baker and Nala Rose. Nala Rose getting the victory. Eh, we'll see what happens. Um, we'll see how they go with this. Um, don't like it because of the in-ring ability, but we'll see how it goes. Next up, we had six-man tag. First match on the show. Those first two matches were pre-show matches. We had SoCal and Censored. So cool! What is it? Yeah. But, uh, you know, every town they hate. SCU! Um, then they had the team of uh, Jurassic Express. That, that's the name of this team. We have Lucius Horus, 
We have Jungle Boy, who boy and his dinosaur. And our midget, Margot Stunt. Um, so yeah, uh, Jurassic Express, it was a very intriguing match. Let's just go with that one. I see you got the victory. Um, I gave it three and a half stars. It was nice opening, kind of a nice opening match. Kind of get, get your kind of, hey, how's this go, show going to go here? You know, a lot, a lot of expectations. Next up, we had, kind of early in the card, but we had Kenny Omega versus Pac. Um, this was supposed to be Kenny Omega and Moxley, but Moxley had the staph infection. He pulled out of StarCast. He pulled out of All Out. Hopefully, he'll be back in time for um, October 2nd for, I'm guessing, Wednesday Night Dynamite. They really haven't named it yet, but the Wednesday Night Show. Um, just like I said in the preview, Pac got the victory. It was a great match. Um, they gave about 13 minutes. The one thing I'm hating about AEW right now is matches are 20 minute time limit. And, and then they count, like New Japan does, 10 minutes remaining, 5 minutes remaining. We don't need to hear that. It takes away from the match for me. Um, I ended up giving this 4.5. I, I thought it was a great match. Pac is just so freaking talented. And Omega can pull a great match out of anyone. Um, it's kind of interesting to see what they do, where they go with Omega now. So wins and losses count because we noticed on the screen as guys came, people came out, they had their win-loss record on there. So now singles, Omega's two, one and two. Now one idea that popped up we were all talking about is can they have Omega go on a losing streak and then just have him get fed up and beat down and then kind of turn him heel and have a heel run? which would be cool to see. But we'll see what happens with that. But Pac got the victory there. Next up, we had the Cracker Barrel Clash. Cracker Barrel Clash, triple threat match with Darby Allen, Jimmy Havoc, and Joey Janela. Oh yeah. There was two of the Cracker Barrel barrels like we've seen it all, all in. One of the barrels had a tray of biscuits sitting on top of it. You heard me, a tray of Cracker Barrel biscuits. This match was insane. Um, the one, the, some cool spots that I kind of wrote out of here. One of the mat, one of the spots. Uh, Joe Janela was sitting in a chair in the corner. Havik went to do a monkey flip. When he flipped, Janela stayed in the chair and, sat, and basically laying on all fours. Um, they end up duct taping Havik to the chair. That was fun. So yeah, they duct taped Jimmy Havoc to the chair, took a thing of thumbtacks, filled his mouth with it, and duct taped his mouth shut. Well, he ended up getting the duct tape off his mouth and spit the uh, thumbtacks at everyone. Um, Janela did a flip powerbomb on Darby Allen through a table. Yeah. Nuts. Um, Darby Allen was had a skateboard that had a bunch of tacks on the bottom of it. He was on the top rope. He basically skateboarded on the back of Janela with tacks on the skateboard. This is just the sickest, craziest spot on here was Darby Allen took one of the barrels. There's two barrels. One of the barrels had Havoc laying on the steel steps on the outside. Darby Allen was on the top rope with the barrel. Did a coffin drop on the barrel on the steel steps. Havoc moved. So he went crashed and burned. Um, yeah, this is Darby Allen. So you thought, okay, Darby Allen alive out there? Um, Jimmy Havoc ended up hitting the acid rainmaker on Janela on a barrel in the middle of the ring to get the one, two, three. Um, just these three guys need to go out every show and just do a hardcore match. Um, call the Cracker Bar Clash. I don't, you know, maybe ne maybe the next show, No Gear or No Fear, whatever it's called, on November 9th. Um, they just need to do Cracker Bar Clash 2. Then every pay per view, it's Cracker Bar Clash X, whatever number it is. So yeah, I just, <laughs> these three guys just, and Moxley to it even, not even even sicker, but yeah. Harvick, or uh, Harvick. Havoc getting the victory there, I gave it four. Um, it was very intriguing, very entertaining. 
Uh, next up, we had the uh, Best Friends versus the Dark Order. Um, Dark Order, formerly known as Super Smash Brothers. Um, this was for first round by in the tag team tournament. Um, Dark Order ended up getting the victory. Um, player Uno ended up pinning Trent Beretta. They had all their little minions ringside. Um, I gave it three and a half. Sorry, it was a great match. Uh, the coolest thing about this match was at the end, lights are out, lights come back on, freshly, freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy in the middle of the ring. And just as entertaining as he is, if you've never seen Orange Cassidy, you have to go look at some GCW stuff and some independent wrestling stuff because he is just freaking hilarious because he never takes his hands out of his pockets. Or when he hits somebody, he's like... And he, I guess he's best friends with the best friends now, so um, they're doing a lot of three-man teams here. So I don't know if there's going to be a six-man tag title type of deal or what's going on, but there's been a lot of a lot of six-man, a lot of three-man teams going on. So um, next up, we had the winner of this match, Rio versus Hira Shir Shirida, Shishid, Shishida. Um, the winner of this goes on to uh, week one, October 2nd, Washington, All Elite, a uh, weekly show to crown the first is Nala Rose to crown the first ever AEW Women's Championship. Um, Rio, she started wrestling with Kenny Omega when she was 13 years old, so nine years ago, over in DDT Wrestling out of Japan. So this is one of those, you know, Kenny Omega is the VP, EF, EVP for the women's division. These are his kind of, these are the people I grew up with, kind of brought into the business. This is who I want in the company. And I think Rio's going to get a huge push. Um, I think when she, she won this match, I give it three star. It was a good, good little match. Um, but when she goes on to versus Nala Rose, it's going to be, you know, David versus Goliath. I think she's coming out on top. Next up, we had the feud. The feud, the end all feuds. We had Sean Spears versus M versus Cody. Um, as we've seen on the contract signing, only one person in each corner. Tolly Blanchard was in Sean Spears' corner. Well, when it they show Brandy backstage looking like something out of Star Wars, her and uh, Fiona, and then. Um, DDP Diamond Dallas Page, dressed in Star Trek, joins them, and the MJF just with his scarf, just like wearing jeans, walks with them. They meet Cody out there. Of course, the pyro goes off, scares the dog. Really scared the dog. Poor dog. He was scared of the pyro. Um, they come out, all of, all of them, and they're like, well, and the ref stops since there's only one person at ringside. He picks MJF, his, you know, their best friends. MJF tells them that's their best friends. We got talking about this. We're like, you know, what if MJF is heel? Cody is face. What if this is all set up? What if this is all MJF turning on Cody later? Well, during the match, there were several times where MJF would have the referee's attention, Tolly and... Sean Spears were doing heel tactics. You know, MJF had the referee out a few times. Tully did get involved. He had some punches going on. It was kind of kind of interesting to see. I mean, the match start doesn't even start. <gasps> I mean, as soon as Cody hits the ring, he dives to the ropes. They have about a minute, a minute, minute and a half of fighting through the crowd. And then they come in the ring, bell rings. The kind of turning point of the match. We have Hall of Famer Arn Anderson, who is part of the Four Horsemen, with Tully Blanchard, comes down the ramp, hits a double A spine buster on Sean Spears in the middle of the ring, which gets Tully's attention. Why are you doing this to my guy? You're a horseman like I am. Tully fo follows Arn out. MJF got involved a little bit, and then we had Cody end up getting the victory. One, two, three, Cody wins. I gave it three and a half. I actually thought it was quite, I'll say, um, underwhelming based on the storyline and at Fighter Fest, the chair shot. 
I just felt the match was underwhelming compared to this, the build up to it. I figured they'd have Sean win and they kind of still kind of carried on, but it's almost like Cody won, it's done, now what? You know, so I don't know how they do with this. I don't know if they go ahead and have MJF turn on Cody. I know at the Wednesday Night Dynamite, October 2nd, Cody has a match against uh, Sammy Guevara, but we'll see what happens. Next up, we had the AAA tag titles on the line in a ladder match. Now, it's a Mexican ladder match, so it's a little more hardcore, so there are some tables in the vault. Oh, where are there tables in the vault? For the AAA Tag Team Championships, the champion, the Lucha Brothers, Ray Phoenix and Pentagon Jr. versus Matt and Nick Jackson, also known as the Young Bucks. We've seen this match already. We've seen these two teams go at it. We've seen this, these two teams go at it at... And, uh... In AAA wrestling, we've seen a six-man tag at Triple Mania. We've seen these two go out and match in AEW. So we've seen these two teams. We know what these two teams are about. Oh, my God. If you've not seen this match, you need to go find it. I've never seen the moves we've seen in this match. I mean, Pentagon... Speared Nick through a table. Well, Matt Jackson speared Phoenix through a table. Um, Matt ended up hitting three Northern Light suplexes on Phoenix. Pentagon and uh, Matt Jackson did a spot that I've never seen before. I don't think I'll ever see it again. Because if you see it again, somebody could get hurt. They did a Canadian Destroyer, Canadian Destroyer, off a ladder, through a table. There are so many things that can go wrong in that, in that spot. There was another spot where they had two tables set up on the outside, a typical ladder match, you know, tables, ladders match, where you set the tables up outside, People climb up the ladder, you push the ladder over, and they fall through the tables. We've seen this spot a million times in every ladder match. Every ladder match with the tables involved, we see this spot. Well, the ladder was just a little bit too far in the ring. They could have had it a little closer. When Pentagon pushed the ladder, uh, when Nick Jackson came down, he not only did he come down, he hit the ropes coming down, but he went through the first table and hit his head on the second table. Um, yeah. It, it was just sickness. I mean, just every time one person would do something off the ladder, somebody else would try to up it. Um, so we end up having Lucha get, I mean, both bucks are just almost dead on the outside. You, you really thought Nick was hurt because he didn't move after that. Um, couldn't find out they were okay. But uh, yeah, it was pretty, pretty oh my god moments in this match. I mean, that Canadian story off the ladder through a table. Whoa, hello. Spot of the year? Spot of the century? I, I mean, of the decade? It's like, holy crap. Lucha and up retaining. They end up climbing the ladder, pulling their title bouts down. Bucks couldn't move, I wonder why, after that kind of match. Then we had the two guys hit the ring in mask. We're in presidential mask and black hoodies. They attacked the Lucha Brothers. They attacked the Young Bucks. They pulled the mask off. Who were they? Just like I said in the preview, Santana and Ortiz formerly known as LAX. Los Periquas, I think what they're going to be called now. They made their AEW debut to a ruckus crowd. Holy crap, that crowd marked out for that. So now, in the AEW Tag Division, do we have Private Party? We have Angelico and Jack Evans. We have SoCal Uncensored. We have Boy and His Dinosaur. We have Dark Order. We have Best Friends, we have Lucha, Young Bucks, LAX. You could have 
three tag matches in a show and be the three best tag matches in the year. So yeah, the tag division is just stacked in AEW. Um, I give it five. I've seen online um, four, and, four and threes. Zonk over at 411 Mania, he gave it five. Um, J Man gave it four and three. So I mean, four, three, five. I mean, I gave the last match, was it Double or Nothing or whatever I think it was? Lucha and uh, Bucks, I gave it five. So it definitely had to get this five. I gave, uh, yeah, TLC match from Progress, I gave it five. So of course I had to give this one five. Um, but yeah, 24 minutes of just gold. I mean, it was it was crazy. And then we had the main event, crowning the first ever AEW World Heavyweight Championship. We had Adam Page, Hangman, coming out riding a horse. Oh my God, it was priceless. He comes through the crowd in a horse. It's like yes. How do you lose the match when you come out on a fucking horse? Had Jericho come out, just typical, you know, kind of heel Jericho entrance. Um, there really wasn't that many just spots. Jericho looked blown up. Um, he was blown up early on. This match lasted 25 minutes. Jericho was blown up 10 minutes in. I was legitimately comparing him to Brock Lesnar, how blown up he was. Only, I mean, there's one decent spot. Paige went to running, do a running, uh, he's running a little flip, uh, flip and into a coat breaker. Um, but other than that, like I said, other than that, there really wasn't too many just spots. Having Jericho get the victory and becoming the first ever AEW Tide champion, I ended up giving it a three star. It was a letdown to me. But you know what? After seeing a little clip on on old Twitter, on the Twitter Twitter land, of uh, him being kind of heelless, leaving there and saying shit and kind of saying shit, shit to the box, made me think of something. What book did Eric Bischoff write years and years ago? Controversy creates cash. Say it again. Controversy creates cash. The controversy of Jericho winning has people talking about AEW over the other shows from the weekend. Controversy creates cash. We talk about AEW, we turn into AEW on October 2nd to see what happens with Jericho in the championship. Does Adam Page get a rematch? Does somebody else get a match? Does CM Punk show up? There's so many rumors, as we know, CM Punk was a star cast. CM Punk, some little clips that I've seen in me comments about, he's content with what he's doing, but he'll accept calls from anyone, that he wouldn't have an issue someday of getting back in. We know how passionate he was. This was the time to do it, but was it? If controversy creates cash, People will tune in to October 2nd to see Jericho with the title. They're going to tune in October 2nd to see this WWE future Hall of Famer. What is he going to do with the title? Well, you'll see on that show a new AEW Women's Championship. You'll probably see tag team tournament for the tag team titles. You'll probably see, you're definitely going to see Cody and Sam Guevara. You're going to see MJF. You're going to get introduced to a whole new world of professional wrestling. But guess what? We tune in on the 9th to see Jericho with the title. Now what? Now we're building a month away to November 9th. For, you know, so, I mean, there's so many things that are going to build up, build up to get us to a point where I don't think every of these shows are ever going to end like we want them to. I grew up in the Attitude Era. I started watching professional wrestling in 1995. I wasn't about the heels. I was all about faces. So guess what? When the NWO was getting over on Sting, Sting was my boy, huge Sting fan. When the NWO was getting over on Hogan and on Hogan Turn, 
on staying I tuned in to see what's next. Controversy creates cash. So that's going to wrap up the AEW All Out review. As always, thanks for watching Robert Sports Show. Uh, definitely want to check out the NXT UK Cardiff review. That's going to be up shortly on Robert Sports Show. Um, definitely had some uh, comments from a uh, COO of WWE. I want to get that show up as well. So thanks for watching Robert Sports Show. Don't just have a great day. Have a spiffy day. Robert Sports Show, your utility leader in sports talent content.